let's understand something here. I'm a black man. I don't pretend to be black. I don't have to be invited to barbecues. I have my own. Okay. And it's usually ain't nothing <laughs> but black people there. So I don't know. Facts. I, I don't know about black people, black folks, in our community make me laugh when they act like myself or others have to qualify ourselves to be what we are innately. Okay. I came out of the womb black. I'm not just a black man. I'm a brother. I'm a stay black. I just believe that you have people like Max Kellerman and I'm not speaking out of turn because I've told him this to his face, both off the air on, on the air. It's real easy for him to say, because in the end, he gets to go home to a different community and don't have to live with the consequences of our actions. We have to live with the consequences of being black every single day of our lives. So I'm going to be about pushing and promoting things that I think work for us, not just giving the lip service and giving the imagery that people want when it ain't going to do us no damn good. I'm not in the symbolic gestures. I'm in the getting things done. And again, because I do know you, you're factual, but you, you just lumped in, I think, someone like a Jason Whitlock who came out the womb black. And I think those of us who watched this brother move and I'm, I'm putting up air quotes around brother, you're not in the same category, even though oftentimes you get thrown into the same category, which I am offended what? by. All right. Yeah. You don't have to speak on because okay. on, I'm, I'm I'll speak on it. I'll, I'll speak on it. I'll speak on it. You know, I understand just like you understand every brother ain't a brother. But what I would ask people to do is look at my track record, look at the positions that I've taken, look at the fights that I've embraced and I've taken on. Do your homework and check out how many black folks I've helped along the way, how my career was almost ruined because of my willingness to come to the defense of black people in this business and beyond. Look at what I do for HBCUs. Look at what I do in the community and on and on and on. They can, t- they can talk whatever the hell they want to talk, but I have facts to back me up in terms of I don't just look the part. I am that dude. But even I- being that dude, hell, I love you. You're my sister. You know that. We don't always agree. Iron That's sharp is iron. And, you- and usually you're right. And I'm the one that's usually wrong, but you know that I'm real with it. And I come with you and I say, yo, this is what I see. This is how I feel. Here is why. Convince me that I'm wrong. And that's where I'm coming from. I ain't going to change, sweetheart. I'm, I'm standing here uh, who I am. I've always been this way. And for those out there that want to come at me with whatever, keep it coming. I'm here. All right. I love you for that. We had uh, Kenny DeJet Smith on yesterday. And he was talking yeah, about growing up brother. in Queens, where you, yeah. you grew up yeah. in Queens. And he yeah. was like, you know, I've been a law-abiding citizen my whole life. And the only two times in my life that I've had a gun pulled on me, and I've been to Harlem, and, of course, I played ball in Queens, as you did, was mm-hmm. when the cops – Two times as a teenager, he said the cops pulled gun, a gun on him. And he said it made him have to carry a basketball with him because he deduced that when he had a basketball, they saw him differently. So if he went to the store with, for his mom, he would be dribbling the basketball. If he had to go on an errand, he would have the basketball, even if he wasn't going to the basketball court. Do you have a similar growing up in, in Queens and Hollis, uh, well, well, a similar well, experience? Well, it's, very sim- it's very similar because Kenny Smith, even though he was significantly better than me, we both played at the same facility. We used to go to Lost Italian Hall on Queens right. Boulevard and play. His, his brother, Vincent Smith, actually trained me. When I was growing up in Hollis, I had to carry a basketball around me. When I was playing at O'Connor Park or Jamaica Park or traveling to West 4th Street or Rutgers or 135th and Lenox, I bet I had a basketball with me, with my, even though my uncle owned a clothing store right around the corner next door to Service Star, which my father managed at, managed at the time. All of this stuff, definitely, we all got our experiences. I've had cops, and I had one cop in Atlanta pull me over and take a gun out and point it at me. And if it wasn't for people, you know, flicking their cameras and stuff like that a few years ago, he might have shot me. I don't know. I had a a similar situation. This was about, I would say, about five or six years ago. I was with my daughter, Nyla. We were on Amsterdam Avenue. I think it was around 69th or 70th Street, somewhere around there. And literally, Six cops surrounded my car, and then two more came. And I, I, I was like, what did I do? I pulled down. I rolled down all four windows. I put my hands on the steering wheel. My daughter was in the back seat with me. I said, what, do, what did I do? He said, shut the fuck up. I'm not in the mood for your shit right now. Literally screamed at me. And I put my hand on the steering wheel. I just gritted my teeth, and I shut up because I'm trying to live for another day. I'm trying to live through that moment. I don't want to antagonize him at that particular moment, as wrong as I know he was. I saw an officer come around. The officer looked through the windshield, and all I heard was, oh, shit. And he grabbed the officer and pulled him to the side, whispered something in his ear. The officer came over to me, 
and said, have a nice day, sir. And then that officer came up to me, Mr. Smith, I'm sorry to bother you. He just had a bad day. And I let it go. But if I wasn't me, who knows what the hell would have happened. So as you are, if you're black, you've always had these experiences. You understand that pol- police brutality is very real, uh, that systemic racism is very real. You're not blind to it, but there's more than there's, – there's a multitude of ways to skin a cat. You know me, Cameron. You know how I think. I don't believe in all of us going down the same alley to resolve a problem. You go east. I go west. You come north. I'm coming south. We coming from a multitude of avenues to resolve this problem. Some ways – protests are the way to go. Other times you infiltrate and you get inside corporate America and you speak to the powers that be. Oh, by the way, while you're doing that, you encourage them to communicate with the power brokers on Capitol Hill. That's one of the things I've been talking about these athletes yes. do. You want to really, really make a difference? I don't want to see, I don't give, I, I don't mean this, I mean this respectfully. I don't care about Black Lives Matter being painted in the streets of D.C. What I care about are black athletes getting together with the white commissioner and the white owner and, oh, by the way, connecting with the white lobbyists and those people that the black community has been patronizing, go to them and say, excuse me, we made X amount of dollars. The black community has given X amount of dollars to your product. What have you done in return for that? Are you going to do something? Because we need you to do something. We need employment. We need apprenticeships. We need internships. We need job opportunities. Oh, Capitol Hill, you want to sit up there and you want to kill on on black men, but a guy like Dylan Roof shoots nine people at a church in South Carolina, you arrest him and take the brother for Burger King? You don't want to wait to jail? Are you kidding me? But a black man that's unarmed is, is dead? How that happened? How about going up on Capitol Hill and saying, excuse me, we want it to be a federal hate crime for a police officer to shoot an unarmed black man. I'm talking about making a difference here. And I don't understand how anybody could disagree with me having that kind of approach, especially when I'm telling you, come down different alleys. If you're coming all coming down the same damn alley, it's easy to get rid of you. But when you're coming from a multitude of directions, it's almost impossible to stop us. I'm playing chess. I'm not interested in checkers. And that's what I want us to graduate to as a community. 